Pardon the Rick Eruption. I'm Jared Ware, and unlike Notre Dame, we're not jumping ship, we're not leaving conferences, we're sticking with Anchor TV for the entire semester. Pardon the Rick Eruption. I'm Dan Charis. I was just at Notre Dame last weekend. It was hey. a heck of a time. It did was... you play like a champion while you were there? I body painted like a champion. I, I like. Did I you absolutely... play like a champion today? I, I'm gonna play like a champion on PTR <laughs> right here. I'm gonna win every debate we got. Same here. Let's do it. Grade the Pats win in Tennessee. You want it? So the Pats get the the win in Tennessee week one dub. Yep. You know, my grade for the Patriots, B+. Plus. Offense, picked up right where it left off last year. Stellar offensive performance by the New England Patriots. Tossing the ball to everyone. Running back gets involved, Steven Ridley. Solid performance. The defense, I liked what I saw of the rookies. You got to like that. The, uh, the, sh the sack followed by the touchdown. Yep. Same time, the, yep. the connection, high tower Jones. But other than that, the secondary s still has problems. So I'm giving them a B+, plus with room to improve. I like where they started, though. I have them at a B. Pretty close grades here. I got two grades to give You're out. You're the I harsher a, grader of the two. I got a special grade remember, to give out at the end of this. Remember? I'm way, yeah. Rick, I'm, women's basketball, like one, and you give them like a C. Yep. It's like, come on, buddy. They just won the LEC. Giving them a B. Tennessee, in the grand scheme of things, four or five win team. Not that great. They were, were nine and seven a year ago. You got to expect the Pats to beat Tennessee in that, in that 35 to 13 range. They were in the 40s. Kept Tennessee under 20 points, which is something I like to see. Defensively, love that young speed. I like. I just. We looked, felt younger, which is which is a good thing. Which is definitely a good thing. Obviously, the two young tight ends, Stephen Ridley, looked excellent. Offensive line and run blocking situations looked great. Passing, pass blocking looked all right. Obviously, Brady got hit. He got banged up. I almost said hurt. He didn't get hurt. He got banged up a little bit. But I like the infusion of youth. And my second grade, special grade, Devin McCourty's mom, Phyllis. Their last name's not McCourty, but it's Phyllis something. She gets an A-plus for the half Patriots, half Titan jersey. Love when it, whenever you get to see those, A.J. Hawks. The A.J. Hawks sister yeah, AJ Hawks Brady wife, Quinn's Brady brother. Quinn, no, it's Brady Quinn's sister, A.J. Hawks wife. A.J. Hawks. I yeah, said yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, got yeah. The, we got the point. People, if they that saw it, they know That was a great shirt at the Fiesta uh, Bowl. Who else, who else would have had one? I don't know. But we got the next topic coming at us. Ryan. What will Wes Welker's role be in 2012? Jared. This is an interesting situation. He missed most of preseason. Obviously, his numbers, week one, were down. Probably expected. When you look at this offense, two wide receivers, two tight ends, I mean, to, you, you kind of struggle to get a slot receiver in in most of the Patriots' base sets. They want Gronk on the field. They want Hernandez on the field. Obviously, Brandon Lloyd, he's going to be at that primary wide receiver, that X. Walker, a, he's a slot. He's a slot guy. I don't know if he can line up wide on the outside by himself. I just don't think he has that skill set. So I think his numbers are going to go down. We picked up Greg Salas How much via down? trade. How much was he, did he even play the other day? Was he even? He didn't play. He didn't. I, right. I don't think he got in. Yeah, I, I, I don't I, know if he was I stressed or not. I forgot all about that guy for the last week. Fifty catches, fifty six oh, catches. That's for absolutely Walker. terrible. He's getting at least eighty catches. I got him at fifty or sixty. He's, he's getting. Is he going to get more or less than Brandon Lloyd? Le way less. Oh, that's terrible. Lloyd Brandon Moore, Lloyd is Gronk getting way more. less. Hernandez right, Wes Welker, the, two of the last three years, 120 plus catches. Obviously, yeah, he won't be anywhere that, near that. two years ago it was pretty much him and Moss. I mean, last year, 65. last year he was good. 65. 65. He's getting at least 80 catches this year. Ugh. 80 catches. Ugh. It's going to be enough to where they can re-sign him for a decently low figure. Mm. They're going to re-sign him. 80 catches. No need to re-sign him. For three, no need no, to re-sign him. Really, you you can get by without him. But why wouldn't you want to have him on your team? What, what's the, what's the downside of having I mean, Wes Welker on your team? I, I don't. Well, there probably isn't a downside. Maybe dollars and cents wise. Again, it just depends on dollars what he wants. Dollars and cents wise, but on the field, money wise. Why wouldn't you want him? You got he's a threat. I just, you got two tight ends now. You got he's a, a guy who can actually go a little bit deep as long as he can catch the pass. That was a terrible throw by Brady. Let's let's get oh, that. Oh, let's put that, that was a this, terrible this throw. This is the age old adage. Terrible. The, did I say throw. that correct? Yeah, you did. Okay, terrible in the NFL. Throw. Touches your hands, you got to catch it. And it that, was a that wasn't throw. even a tip the, off the fingertips. That was the in his exact hand. Same throw. He's to wide open. In the he Super has Bowl. room to win. He's got same nobody throw within to five. Walker in the oh. Super Bowl. That's a seam route inside the corner. Not, you need to not put even that on his the front th shoulder. He put it on their back shoulder both times. He was times. backpedaling on this. Around. Walker was Because it was on in. his back shoulder. Well, if he's putting right. that front shoulder, which would be his left shoulder. Do you know how far that throw was? It was like 40 yards downfield. you got to put that right on the nut. you got to put it right on that shoulder. Right on the number. If you're, if you're yards one of the best field, quarterbacks of all time, he is. Wait, then you should be putting that in the right spot. Oh, that's... Uh, so every quarterback, no every throw asked. by Tom Brady has to be right in no the numbers. No questions asked. If you're one of the best field. quarterbacks in the history of the game, with yes, I expect you to make... 300-pound defensive Not having to fit that ball between any defenders. 
30 yards of open space on both of those throws. I expect that throw to be a lot more accurate than that. All right. That's bottom line, bottom line throw. is he should have cut Have you ever ball. seen Peyton Manning throw a seam route? He puts it right on that front shoulder. Oh, so he lets Austin Collier get Manning wrecked, again. wrecked and it probably yeah. ended. So if you want to get a but he was touchdown. wide open on those throws, so okay. there's no danger there. No, he should have caught it touchdown. Bad, th horrible throw. Awful throw. Good enough throw. Not even close. Good enough throw. I would say a, a tremendously bad throw from right, someone What's that, what's that to next topic, Ryan? What have your teams been impressed and disappointed in week one? All right, so I'm going to go start with, what do you want, impressed or de uh, you, Your dealer's choice. All right, go well, ahead. I'm going to go disappointed, and okay. some people might go Saints. I'm going to go another team from the same division, the Carolina Panthers. I was oh. expecting them to have a season where they go 8-8, eight and eight, maybe sneak in. Uh, I wasn't going to say sneak into the playoffs, but it's pretty much because Cam Newton was my quarterback. Got me 12 points. Thanks, buddy. You got 300 passing yards. He got, let me see here, Cam Newton. Four rushing yards. Thanks, buddy. That's nothing so short that's why of what he deserves. That's, nothing that is short why they disappointed. If, if you want to be a good squad, you got to beat Tampa Bay. Maybe Tampa, Tampa Bay is a good team. Tampa Bay probably Maybe had Tampa's about 20,000 in their stadium. They have game. four first-rounders on their defensive line. Okay, who's your, they could be pretty good. Who's your and they struggle team? to run. The, Carolina in general struggles to run the ball. At one point, D'Angelo Williams, negative well, fantasy points. It's pretty much Cam Newton disappointed. My unimpressed, I went specific units. I didn't go team. Unimpressed unit for me, Green Bay's defense. I thought they'd be a little oh, better than last year. You got to be able to get a little better. Our defense was terrible last year. We looked a little better. We didn't look That's great. True. We looked a little better. Completely unimpressed by Green Bay's defense. When Alex Smith picks you apart and you leave Randy Moss wide open at 30, 38 years old, I have no idea how old Randy Moss 35. is. Over 35. Over 35. You leave him Moss. wide. You leave him wide open. That's awful. Uh, I think Green Bay is going to struggle this year if their defense doesn't come around. Okay. Big game tonight. Im impressive. Jay Cutler. Impressive. Looks I got Atlanta Falcons. Yep. I mean, they go into it. A, a tough place to play at Arrowhead Stadium is one of the tougher venues in the NFL. I don't we know don't if great Kansas City is a team. And but then tough Kansas atmosphere. City is like a, a, it's a road game week, week one. Yeah. And then you go up there and you throw 40 points out of Matt Ryan, throws 300 yards. Julio Jones looks like a, a first team All Pro. Yep. I got to say that Atlanta's off to a good start, and I like where they're headed. Not a huge test for them. T team atmosphere, yes. Skill set on the, t on the field it's by still Kansas a road City. Game. Yeah, it's Kansas City. I'm not afraid of Kansas City. I'm not afraid points. of Romeo Cornell. Impressed by 40 points, but it's Kansas City. Impressed, I mentioned this this squad, St. Louis's defense. They look great. They lost the game, but look great. Stop in Detroit. A lot of weapons on that offense. They got Robert Calvin Johnson on week. the outside. You have Titus Young, who I had on my fantasy team, who didn't do anything in the slot. Brandon That's Pettigrew at tight end. They don't run the ball extremely well, but... St. Louis's defense, I said they'd be good. Looked pretty good. They should have won that game. Sam Bradford, open it up, throw the ball downfield, please. Next topic. Thoughts on Saints being unsuspended? This is an interesting situation here. I didn't ever think we would see players unsuspended, but that happened. So Jonathan Vilma, he was inactive, but he was on the sidelines wearing street clothes. Probably should have been wearing something a little nicer than what he was, but on the sidelines in street clothes. I think... I think now you got to think about because there are going to be some suspensions throughout the year handed down from Roger Goodell. I think this is going to be in the back of a lot of people's minds, especially on borderline suspensions. May, when maybe you're saying, "Ah, oh, that should have been four games," and he went two. I think there are question marks now around, around Roger Goodell's decision making. Pulled the trigger very quickly on the Saints players. Didn't have a lot of evidence, so my main concern is now it's going to become a question every suspension when people are questioning it in in the media. There is going to be a seated out saying, "Hey." You already messed up once. Possible he could do it again. I'm right there with you. I think this, he, he goes from one year to nothing at all. Yeah. Like, you got to give him some sort That's of suspension. That's a huge mess. Some sort of suspension for Jonathan Vilma, plus other states players. It's just going to open up everything, like you said. Like, a, a four-game suspension, why don't we knock it down to two? Yeah. Why don't we not even give the guy a suspension? Yeah. It's like, exactly. this guy just, James even, Harrison just hit this guy. Finds He's fourth now. concussion he gave for a head-to-head -head hit. Now we got more reason for him to be complaining than hear him, him on ESPN. Even, especially in the NFL now, we're seeing fines every you week for illegal hits. you got to stick with the, we're gonna the see, penalty. We're going to see borderline hits, 50,000. Well, people are going to say, yeah, that should only been maybe 25,000. Questioning his decision-making, that's not good at the top, but Roger Goodell's not going anywhere. So more than likely, we'll forget about this by week six. It won't be an issue. But it's good for the Saints picking up their all-pro linebacker because their defense looked not excellent against a rookie quarterback. Okay, next topic. Will Griffin be legit in 2012? All right, so let's go through the numbers. 19 for 26 for Robert Griffin, 73% completion percentage, which is just what he did in college. 320 yards, two touchdowns. Obviously, one was at 80 yarder to yep. uh, Pierre Garçon. Yep. Did I say it right? You did. Try, try it again. Pierre Garçon. 
Okay. And then uh, the Haitian. Haitian 40, 42 yards uh, rushing, which is a solid number. Mount Union. He's he's got. I think he's going to be going down a little bit. The Saints defense isn't that that adept to covering offenses. I would say. And then no. uh, they're going to be, be facing better teams this year. The, the whole NFC East is is going to be beast to Robert Griffin. So I think I think his numbers are going to go down. You can maybe maybe get him as a fantasy starter. And uh, just down numbers for Griffin. They're going to go down. He's going to be the. I'm going to call it right now. It's going to be the best out of the rookie quarterbacks because Tannehill, oh, he's, he's got to carry the Dolphins. By far and away. And then Luck, he played decent. And uh, who are the other two quarterbacks? Russell Wilson, who's in yep. Seattle, and they're terrible. Brandon Whedon was. And then Brandon Whedon was about as bad four, as you can get four interceptions. Position, let's be honest. I think right now the gold standard is Cam Newton's rookie season last year. But the thing numbers about that wise, was. Numbers wise, wins wise. Let's look numbers at wise, numbers. Numbers wise, it was completely Cam Newton, but RG, wins wise, he only got like six. RG3 won't get to Cam's numbers, but I think he's going to surpass that win total. By what? Total. One? I could see them maybe going 8-8. Eight eight. This is a good defense. Let's give that Washington defense a lot of credit. They can get after the passer. Very solid, underrated unit. Got to give a lot of credit to the offensive coordinator. Robert Griffin started the game 8-for-8. Eight eight. All eight of those Missed, passes uh, were at Shanahan the line of screen. Jr. We're at the line of scrimmage or behind. So kept it simple, raised his confidence. Even the touchdown was a slant over the middle. That's an easy throw, especially for an NFL caliber quarterback. If you want to be the best quarterback in the world, you got to hit him in the numbers. Got him, exactly. And he did. He let him catch, run, touchdown. That's what you That's, have to that do. That is what you and want I've to do. I've said it on my radio show. I've said it on here. Robert Griffin III throws a better ball vertical down the field than Tom Brady does right now in his career as a rookie. And he did it better than he did as a college player. Well, you didn't see Tom back. Brady when he was a rookie. Well, even, no, I'm saying now. Oh, Tom now? Brady now and oh, RG3 as a rookie. RG3 throws the ball better better vertically down the field. Throws just a way nicer So ball. he would have hit Brandon Lloyd. Uh, he would have put him in stride. That would have been six. Oh. To the house. He, we would have won this. Why don't we, we trade won, Tom Brady? We would have won the Super Bowl. I would do that trade, trade in a heartbeat. Brady I would Robert do Griffin? that trade in a heartbeat. We'd probably win a Super Bowl this year. This year with Next a rookie topic. quarterback named Robert Griffin? Okay. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. What's not to like about re-signing Sagan? I'm not. Okay. Gonna, I'm not going to sit here at this at the desk and say I'm an NHL analyst or an NHL expert. Uh, I know the bare minimum, but what I do know in any sport, if you have a young talent who has the potential to not only be a superstar, be your franchise player. I think right now, when you think bo the Boston Bruins, most people would think Tyler Sagan. Lock him up. Keep him on your team. Young talent. Can't let them go early in their careers. It's as simple as that. How does it affect this team? He's a goal scorer. Need to score goals to win hockey games. The last time I checked, that is the accurate statement right there. What is not to like? That's hockey the analysis only thing right I, there. The for only you. thing I can think of of what's not to like is the Bruins have re-signed their entire squad. Fourth liners are all locked up for another two years. But obviously, in this case, Tyler Sagan needs to be re-signed. Yeah. Twenty years old was an All-Star last year. We expect bigger things from him this yep. year. Uh, contract is along the lines of Taylor Hall, the number one pick, and Jeff Skinner. The uh, guy in Carolina who's same age, pretty much, same yep. kind of stats. He's also an all-star. So, But the thing that I like about this deal is when he's all set with his deal, it's a six-year deal, he's going to be like 26, 27 years old. He, you get, you're going to want to lock him up a couple years before that because yeah, he could absolutely. be one of the best players in the NHL. And then you could lose him to free agency, and he's going to command huge, huge dollars. Have to keep your stars. Have to pay your young talent. That's universal across any professional sport. Bruins did it. Appreciate that move. Am I going <laughs> to watch the Bruins? No, but... He's on the he's on the team, and that's the, well, it's an NHL lockout, so we're not obviously watching. Even when it comes back, I'm not going to watch. Anyways, okay. we got Rory, a Rory McIlroy topic here. Is Rory better than Tiger? What was at his age? Okay, so Rory McIlroy is 23 years old. He's won like two of the, that the last. That picture has to be from when he was like 12. <laughs> yes, I think it was. Yeah, probably about that much. Uh, we might get into a little bit of Rory later in the show, but yeah. Rory McIlroy, 23 years old, won like the last two weeks. Yep. Uh, and then he won the PGA Tour last month. Smashed in all of those Smash, too. Smash is probably the better way to put it. But I'm going to say he's not better than Tiger Woods at this age. Tiger Woods was already a player of the year. And he, he only had one major compared to two for Rory. But he's way more consistent. If you looked at Rory McIlroy at the beginning of this year, he's not even making cuts. He's, he's missing the cut by huge margins. Somehow he turned it around and he's still, he's probably the best player by far right now playing in the PGA Tour. The Ryder Cup's coming up, so we'll, we'll get to really know Rory McIlroy right there. We'll probably see Caroline Wozniacki at, his, at the, uh, the wives slash girlfriends dinner for that event, yep. which Tiger Woods now brings his mother to because every girl hates him on, 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 on playing. I, don't I, don't th th right? I think it's Katilda. It's Katilda. <laughs> Katie Burks in studio, she, she loves Tiger Woods, so if Tiger uh, Woods asked her, she would, she would go. But I mean, Anyways, I'm going to say Rory McIlroy, not as good. I'm thinking Rory, because in golf it's all about majors. Rory's got two, Tiger had one. 
I like cuts. your I like your uh, your logic. Tiger here. was freakish with the amount of cuts that he did miss. The amount of consecutive cuts he made was unbelievable. That is just no one will ever be close to that ever again. And Rory is it has prodigious amounts of talent, and he's already missed a bunch of cuts this year. So that that is such an outlier statistically. That cut streak, the amount of cuts that he made percentage wise, unbelievable. Plus, why is Rory better? Better swing at this age. His, that swing one is nearly perfect. Two, that's going to last until he's 110 years old. As long as he can still swing a golf club, he's going to have that swing. Obviously, speed-wise, is going to go down. Distance is going to drop. Perfect swing. Healthier. This guy is going to dominate golf for probably the next 30 years. If I 30 years. This guy's going to be this awesome. 53 is going to be in the Masters making cuts. He's going to be winning senior PGA events. Everyone's going to be saying, what, about the what, senior Rory, PGA what is Rory McIlroy doing, even when he's 50-plus? Fred Couples, is he gonna over be 50, has been in contention at the Masters. Oh, big deal. Tom Watson lost a playoff three years ago. Everyone over 50. Okay, Rory, that's, that's just out of the question Rory's to, gonna to be bring up one 30 of the years guys. from now. He's going to be one. He's going. He is the guy now. Yeah, Tiger. Is he? Is he? Tiger a, does not get to 18 majors. Rory gets to 20. Oh, that's that's outlandish. That's, and that's, that's, not a, lock. that's, that's a, a lock. That's it's a lock right happen. now. Because once Tiger's gone, no one's even close to Rory. No one. It's, and there's no one to come. Oh, oh. We're giving Rory McIlroy just like Tiger Woods, where he's killing everybody. Yes. No. He's already done it twice. Twice. Did he's you see? Did, did you, you see this guy? He's got. He's, he and he can't was make crushing cuts at sometimes. the Masters. Okay. It's uh, almost. Gonna, it's there's all no about way the guy's majors. Making, so this guy's. We're looking right here majors, on the screen at the best majors. golfer in history. Yes. Twenty This guy majors. will be the best. Have you seen no him way play? Have you seen him majors. crush field at majors? Yeah, I've also seen him miss cuts by like ten strokes. Tigers miss cuts before too. Yeah, like twice. Yeah, that doesn't mean this guy's missed two cuts in this year. Twenty majors. Okay. This guy's gonna do it. He's way better than Tiger. Better short Andre game, Ward, better pound everything. Pound so if you watched uh, last weekend, Andre Ward faced off Chad Dawson, 175-pound kingpin. He moved down on weight to face Andre Ward at 168 pounds. Andre Ward undefeated, knocks him out in 10 rounds. Uh, so uh, who, who's the best pound-for-pound pound fighter now? I have no idea. I've never watched a boxing match in my entire well, life. Well, it's, so it's either Ward or yeah, pretty I much Mayweather. I know Manny Pacquiao and I know Floyd Wayne Ma Floyd Mayweather because he lost three million on Michigan. He also but he made won like ninety thousand. Yeah, he made ninety thousand on the Pats. Because Floyd's in jail. Come on, give a little enthusiasm to this topic. Because Floyd's in jail, I'm going with Andre Ward. Like you can't be the best pound for pound fighter in jail. So well, he's out of jail at this Andre point. Andre Ward. If, if the if the sentence lasted this long, I'm gonna go Andre Ward here. Mayweather, he looked a little a little rattled in his last fight against Cotto. I would and Ward, this guy's he can fight speed wise, inside, outside. He can slow it down. Can he fight fire with fire. He hasn't had to fight fire with fire. This guy is that good. Jim Lampley never has to say he's fighting fire with fire. But look at look at Ward. Undefeated. I just told you everything that's good about Ward. I don't even know. Who, he's faced the best guys in his weight class. He's faced the best guy in his upper weight class. The only thing for him to do now is move different weight classes. That's the only thing I can think of. I saw his next fight, Kelly Pavlik. I don't know. He's going to crush Pavlik in like four-round knockout if that happens. Best pound-for-pound pound fighter, Andre Ward. Also a gold medalist. This is an interesting question here because he's leaving UConn amid some suspensions here, leaving them in trouble. Very, um, what is his name at Kentucky? I forget his name. John, Cal John Calipari. Similar to that, except this is retirement and he's not just moving on to another program to do the exact same thing three times because he's going to leave Kentucky. Kentucky's going to get put on probation and more okay. than likely he's going to get hired Where's his by next school going to be, you think? It's hard, I'm to say go UCLA. it's hard to go. It's definitely hard to go from Kentucky anywhere else in college basketball. UCLA. UCLA might be the only place. Maybe, maybe UNC. Maybe Roy Williams getting up there. I think Roy Williams loves it. Maybe. I don't. I'm not sure though. All right. But so what's his legacy? We we haven't even talked about it. I think he's turned Connecticut from just another school in New England that no one's really ever heard of into a legitimate college, just just through basketball. Very similar to like. A Duke University. No one would ever heard of Duke if Duke wasn't good at basketball. That's that you gotta give all the credit to Coach K. Same thing in this case with Jim Calhoun. The guy is a great talent evaluator. UConn has been a powerhouse for 15, 20 years. Gotta give him all the credit in the world for that. And let's be honest, we'll forget about him leaving them of uh, um, uh, in suspension. Oh, definitely. because we forget little stuff like oh, that. Oh, we don't even care about that. All we care about is wins. That's all that everything care everybody cares about wins. So yep. I like what you said about Calhoun making UConn a, uh, a school to go to, a destination school through this basketball program. But what I'm going to remember him by is he was – Providence College is technically my favorite basketball team, and UConn is, is PC's biggest rival. Not UConn's biggest rival, if you want to say it like that. 
I'm going to think of the guy as a guy who flips out on press conferences, flips out on reporters, flipped out when they were asking him about Ryan Gomes. The guy just has cranky bad days. Also, allegations, like you said. Yep. And, uh, you know, he had some health problems, but he also got 870 plus wins. He's, is he in the Hall of Fame? Oh, he will. For he sure. will be. Three, for sure. Lock. Three, First ballot. three NCAA uh, titles. So, but also, what I want to say about it is college basketball and college sports is just recruiting now. Like, oh. how much do you have to coach? Well, it's just recruiting. You do have to. You do have to he, coach him up. At, now at this school, where he's coached UConn up, he doesn't have to recruit kids. It's just let's go to UConn. Yeah, you definitely have to coach him up. Still, there's right, still work bit. to be done. You gotta keep oh, him sharp. It's, it's a little bit about coaching, but it's it's way more recruiting. Way more. That's what I think about Coach Calvin. 55, 45, I would say, percentage-wise. I'd say 55 is probably recruiting 45 coaches. Yeah, I was going to say 60, 40 in recruiting. Okay, what's the next topic? Do you like the Irish battle? Oh, boy. No, Golden Domers. Golden Domers. Let's just throw this out there. I'm not really oh a, a huge God. Irish fan. I'm not, I'm not really into the Irish. Is there any entity in the world more pretentious than Notre Dame University and Notre Dame football specifically? The fact that they think they're still relevant in college football to me, I laugh about that when I go home at night, every night. I go, I look myself in the eyes. I had a <laughs> rough day. Night. I had a rough day. Like, can't it get any worse? And I think about how stupid Notre Dame looks every day when they talk about their football. I say, you know what? I'm still in a good way. I'm still better than Notre Dame football. Go to a conference. Why are you still independent, Notre Dame? When's the last time Notre Dame has won ten, has won ten football games and, and made uh, it to Charlie the Weiss bowl in game? Charlie Weiss, two thousand seven. Two thousand seven. That Terrible. is years. That is decades in college football. You need to win now, and you need to win often. You can't lose to Navy. You can't lose to Army. You can't lose to Air Force, which they've done. You I mean, are off the Golden since, like, the 50s. Go to a conference, lose ten games a year, and shut up all the fake Notre Dame fans that I have to deal with. Every day in my life, you guys are uh, uh, the worst part of my life is Notre Dame college oh, football. Come on, the worst that's part really of my life is Notre Dame college football. I was there last week and I enjoyed it. I I truly enjoyed it. But Unbelievable. I'm, not, I'm still not a huge Irish fan. Unbelievable. I was just the experience was great. But bouncing to the ACC, I mean the Big East now looks like more of a joke, which it already is a joke. Even yeah, though the Notre B Dame is Big East. Big East is dead. Oh, dude, it's, 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 dead. it's rough right now. Rough in the Big East. Providence is actually its headquarters. Did you know that? I did. Way to go. And uh, also about Notre Dame ACC, it's going to help the ACC basketball-wise. But the reason everyone says Notre Dame is going to the ACC is to recruit kids up along the East Coast. I looked at their roster last week. They got kids from everywhere in the country going to Notre Let's Dame. Let's be honest. Top-tier recruits aren't going to go to the middle of nowhere in Indiana where they can go to oh, Alabama. middle of nowhere. Where they can go to Florida, where they can go to California, and you get you get weather, you get good-looking girls, you get great facilities, you get winning programs. There were good-looking girls Sorry, Notre, Notre Dame. Dame. That's there, how you recruit. There were good-looking girls at Notre Dame. My first-hand experience. Not as many as there are probably at Southern Cal, or at Alabama, or at Florida. It was so or hard at to Florida State. It was, you, what, one thing or about, at Virginia. One thing about South Bend I didn't like it was I had to go to six different stores to finally find body paint. Notre Dame. What are your thoughts on the USA Jamaica World Cup qualies? All right, so qualification just ended on Tuesday. Not ended, but this the, this, this leg, window. This window. Not, window. Of it's not even leg stage. I, I couldn't find the correct word, but. U.S. had two games against Jamaica, go to Jamaica, lose terribly, come back home, win almost pretty terribly. Yeah. Uh, I think there are a lot of people after that first game, and first of all, who, whoever does the TV rights for these for these away games, games oh, are it's brutal. horrendous. Can it's we, absolutely brutal. Can we put these games on channels that people have heard of or be in sports? I'm pretty sure that was the first day they've ever been on, like, ever been on air was was when they broadcast was this the that, game. Was this that one that's owned in the Middle East? I have no idea. There's some, some network that's that just came out like We're that. on ESPN, please, so we can actually watch the game. A lot of people calling for Jurgen Klinsmann's head after that road loss to Jamaica. And that was, you have to say that that's shocking because, let's be honest, U.S. athletes, the only sport that we should be losing to Jamaica in is track and field. Let's be honest. And well, mainly just the sprinting, sprinting event. That's just, just a sprinting, sprinting event. Everything else, USA, smash. Everything else, we should be able to smash Jamaica pretty handily. Awful lineup. Kyle Beckerman should never get a call up to the national the team. The only thing cool about Beckerman again. is is his hair. Jose That's Torres. That's the only thing. Like, I put him in FIFA just to get his hair in the game as a late sub. And let's be honest, Jose Torres probably oh, gave himself so many two chances. or three more games because he played decent on Tuesday night. But more than likely, let's not bring him to Brazil. I gotta this say, got to say, you got to go into Jamaica, get a draw, and then you come home, get a win. You, you at least you got the win. They, they, they don't have to. They're tied with seven with Jamaica yeah, and Guatemala. Well, the qualification isn't. It isn't locked up yet. Well, they got Antigua and Barbuda on the road. That should be like a three to nothing win at the very least. And then you got Guatemala at home. That should be a two to nothing win at the very least. So you should we have need, no problem we qualifying. We need to make the World Cup. But you need Bradley need and Donovan to. back. That would set us back twenty years. Is Murray up there with Roger, 
Rafa and Novak? I'm going yes, big yes. You win the Olympics, one of the biggest event, one of the bigger events, just that event right underneath the. We well, got the top. You, every, everyone. Yeah, wants to everyone's be there. So that's a huge win at Wimbledon. Not the same atmosphere, obviously, as the championships at Wimbledon, but on grass, so that's a big win for him. And then you back that up with a U.S. Open win over. Let's be honest. Sets four, uh, sets three and four. Novak Djokovic was playing unbelievably well. It's not like we got a, a a lower level Novak Djokovic not playing his best. He was playing really well. All the momentum going into that fifth set was with Novak Djokovic. Andy Murray stepped up mentally, and I think that's been his biggest stumbling block because physically he has all the tools. Love the switch to to Ivan Lendl, hugging the baseline, more pop on his more pop on his ground strokes because he's closer to the baseline. We could see all. Oh, Maybe two or three more Grand Slams from Andy Murray in the next four or five years. Oh, I, I would definitely. I, I might go. But more the, than let's that. be honest. The big one is he has to win at Wimbledon, and I'm saying he's never going to win there. Okay. Well, I'm putting him up there with uh, Roger, Rafa, and Novak. Roger, let's face it. Rank him. Rank him. Right now, I mean, uh, Rafa's four because he's hurt. Yep. Novak's probably one. Federer's two. Murray's three, and then uh, obviously okay. Rafa four. But I mean, he's right up there because Roger's going to be out of here within the next two years. Nadal, he's getting hurt at all times. Yeah. And Novak, he's lost a little luster against Murray, let's be honest. Yeah. So I got Murray up there, and these four right now, you just got to cherish the moment with four great yeah, tennis this is players. Because it's going to be go. Great that, after 2013, you're not going to see great like this Great that each again. one won a slam this year. That's, that's nice symmetry. Very nice, very nice. Is Serena the best female athlete of our generation? So let's, let's go. This could be a, a fun little debate right here. I am going to say, yes, Serena Williams is the best female athlete of our generation. Where else are you? She's been dominating since I've been like eight years old. She's 19 years old. She goes to the U.S. Open as a 19-year-old, wins it. Now she's 30, wins it again. She's won 15 majors. She sometimes gets hurt. She comes back. She wins as like an 81 seed at the U.S. Open. She comes back again. She faces her sister, went, beats her. Just 15 grand slams. You're never going to find in a sport like tennis where it's all parity and it's it's very, very like young, youthful. She's 30 right now, which is old for a tennis player, and she's still killing it. She Nobody – like, she she came back in that final of the US Open, but she's been absolutely killing it right now. Tough to argue against Serena, but I'm going to go to golf. I'm going to go Annika Sorenstam. There was a point probably four or five years ago where women's golf was basically – how, how much will Annika Sorensen win by in Grand Slam in, in the majors? She was that dominant, and I'm gonna be honest. I think if she, if they could coax her out of on retirement, she'd probably win three or four, maybe five more, five more uh, majors in I golf. Could, I, women's golf I right think, now is just way and I think it's cares. I think it's harder to win a golf tournament at that consistent level than it is to win tennis tournaments at that level. Well, they're both hard sports because they're individual sports, and yeah. when you think about it, 120 I'm people in a Annika. field. In tennis, that's the equivalent of like two and a half NFL football teams. Yeah. So you got to be. It's really, tough really to good. argue against Serena, but I'll go Annika by a little bit. I'm gonna go Serena. Next topic. Is Andy Roddick a Hall of Famer? Andy Roddick retired last week at the U.S. Open. Thirty years old, still could. Uh, Does anyone still remember could do that he retired? Does anyone remember that? No, they remember the two great Slam finals. That's what they remember. They, well, they're not. That's not the question. Is Andy if they Murray. remember? The Grand Slam Finals is—is is it? Is, is he, he going to make the Hall of Fame? Fame? More than likely. Is anyone going to remember? It's not about that. Is, is do you think gonna he's going to be in the Hall of Fame? Do I think no, no. Do you think he should be in the Hall of Fame? I, one, I don't think he should. Two, my big point is no one's going to remember who Andy Andy Roddick is. Everyone on, at ESPN who is at Flushing Meadows is making this huge deal out of Andy Roddick. Oh my God, we're going to never forget his impact on men's U.S. tennis. Yes, we are because we already have. We saw a great Slam final from Serena coming back. We saw a great slam final by Andy Murray. We already forget. We already don't care. Who's the next person in line? One slam in your career as a U.S. athlete, not good enough. Not good enough? Oh, it's not about, being, it's, be honest, it's, it's not as, about being American to get in the Hall of Fame. It's about as, being a good as tennis As soon as player. he got married to Brooklyn Decker, threw in the towel. Do I blame his him for best it? Year no, in tennis but did he do was it? 2009. Yes. Overall, best year of tennis, threw 2009. Threw in the towel. I'm going to say he is a Hall of Famer. Let's look at the numbers here. One Grand Slam uh, championship, not that great. Five Grand Slam finals. The other four, he lost to Roger Federer. It's tough. It's tough when you're in an era where you got three of probably the best, I don't know, like history tennis-wise, but I'm going to say three of the best ten men's tennis players of all time. It's going to be hard to squeak in there and, and get another major. Look, if, if Roger Federer, I just think if, it's a if Roger Federer wasn't in his way, 
He's got seven, I think seven to nine major because championships. we've seen the other guys compete. We've seen those other three guys now compete and beat Michael each other. Michael Chang we never won, saw it from won Andy Roddick. title, and that was when he was 17 years old. So, so we went the next 10 years of his life, and we're like, oh, let's go, Michael Chang. He's in, in the, the Hall of fame. fame. Put him in the Hall of Fame. He's no in the Hall of Fame. No one's going to go up to Andy Roddick's bus, right, right, how wherever about this? the Hall of Fame is. If he beats Federer in that 2009 Wimbledon final, he's in the Hall of Fame. I, I already said he's in the Hall of Fame now. Do you Why? think he should be if he won that game, if he won that match? No. Why wouldn't he not be then? He finally beat Roger Federer. Do it more than once. He's a Hall of Famer. It's tough in that. He's a Hall of Famer, but my point is that no one's going to the Hall of Fame to see Andy Roddick's statue. I'm sure nobody goes to see Michael Chang. It's just something that... Uh, no one's going to no remember gonna see, Andy Roddick. How, that's we, my point. Are you going to go to the to Newport, to the Tennis Hall of Fame, to see Jennifer Capriotti? No. So she should be in the Hall of Fame. I don't even All remember these who Jennifer so, so how many, is. How many tennis players should be in the who Hall of Fame? Who do you remember? Is this someone you're going to remember 10 years? Are you going to tell, many, your, are you gonna tell uh, your kids, uh, I saw Andy Roddick's last match? No, because no one cared. Am I going to tell my kids, I saw Rafa's last match? Yes. Roger's last match? Yes. Novak Djokovic's last match? Yes. Okay, well, how Andy many Murray? Hall of Fame? Yes. Oh, Serena? So, so yes. So this is like the most exclusive Sharia club in Pair, sports. Mer, Mer, no, I'm saying he, no one's going to remember, so we shouldn't care. So he shouldn't be a Hall of Famer? I already said he's in the Hall of Fame. I've said that. But like that's not times. the question. It's whether you think he should be. And you I, said no. I don't think he should. But if he won one more final. No. Okay. That's terrible. He should be. What an awful it's representation a of couple. tennis. We used to be great at tennis. The U.S.? Well, that's too bad. He shouldn't be... Uh, we have Andy Roddick. He shouldn't be we having Andy Maria Sharapova live here since he's seven we years old. We have the Andy Roddick's of the world representing us now. Well, he's gone now, so it's now like Jack Sock. Your now, boy well, Jack Sock has been in three, three majors. We have John life. Isner now, even better. American men's tennis is terrible. What's your favorite athletic couple? Well, let's just break it down for you right here, why we even have the topic. Ryan Lochte, the... the well, how would you describe him, his performance in London? Mercurial. Okay, I got to look up that word on dictionary.com. Should I know that word? No. Okay, thanks. I don't even know if I use that right, but okay, yeah, sounds well, right. Anyways, Lochte, he's hooking up with a, a, a little local celebrity here in here. Olivia Culpo, Miss USA. She's from Cranston. She's only 20, which is crazy. So that could be a potential favorite celebrity couple. Jared, who is your favorite athlete celebrity couple? you got to be athletes. I'm going... you got two athletes. It, it has to be two athletes. It can't be celebrity. Fine, celebrity athlete. Because I, I went off the grid here. They've been in the news recently for all the wrong reasons. Shakira and Gerard Piquet. He oh. played for Barcelona. Shakira, obviously. The, dude, dude, I heard Shakira on the way icon. here. I was, I was the recording icon. Obviously, I think if you put their names in on Google, you'll find out why they've been in the news recently. So, I'm going for them just because of relevance right now. But I'll, I'll let you go because I think I know who you're going with. I don't want to spoil it. Did you, did you look at my notes? Because no, I didn't tell I, you. This is just guessing. All right. Well, you, you're probably not going to get it if you didn't look at my notes. It's uh, I'm sticking with tennis here, and I'm going Steffi and Andre. Steffi Graf, Andre Agassi. I thought you would go Wazel Roy there. Nope, nope, nope. Do not want to go there because, because uh, Carolina was awful. All right, yeah, she's awful and she's hot and she's dating some dude that should not be dating her. If he's punching if he above his weight, is that he's what you're saying? He's punching above his weight is really what I'm well, saying. You got that bank account behind, like next to your name. Let's be honest. Okay, right. well, I'm gonna go Steffi and Andre. I thought Steffi Graf would have been way older than Andre just because Andre's career took him into 2006. Steffi was done by mid 90s, so I'm gonna go with them because look at this. Steffi Graf, 21 major championships. Andre Agassi, 8 major championships. 29 between the two. That's just a match made in heaven. Their son Remember, or daughter should be a great Remember when one of, the big, one of the big... Plus, Andre has the great earring. The, one of the, the big string and, earring. A great, and he used to have great wigs, but... Um, wigs? That, I thought those were actually no, those actual wigs. locks. I think those were wigs. At Why would he wear point, wigs? Because he was a drug addict at one uh, point. Yeah. I think your hair he did do up, coke. Uh, when that happens. But uh, another great couple... Uh, that was in the news years ago. They split now. Chris Everett and uh, Greg Norman. Yeah. When he was like in the, she used to date he almost won the British Open, and that was a huge story. Like he just got married to Chris Everett. Now he's going to win the British Open. They divorced ended like up two losing, months later. They got divorced. Um, and then Chris Everett also used to date Jimmy Connors. That guy seems wacky. She likes athletes. She's pretty awful on those tennis coverages, by the way. Anyway, so that's our last show. Uh, not our last show. Last let's topic. let's let's be honest let's be here. Last, last topic, topic of the show. So if you want your, uh, to tell us your favorite athlete couple, you can tweet us at TH3Warehouse or, Danny, or at Danny H. Harris. That is the two right there. You can uh, tweet us your favorite athlete couples or anything else about the show. And uh, so we just got to thank Ryan Betancourt, yep. Tom Lima, yep. Brett. Poirier. Poirier. Poirier, Poirier. Sounds good. Either way. All anyway, right. it sounds good. And um, Katie Burke again for... Just chilling. Just chilling. In live what, studio. Why did he reference Tiger Woods and her... Together. Live studio audience.
Um, so yeah, so that's it. And uh, we got we got anything else, Jared? Tip your waiters. <laughs>